Hi, this is Jeff Hansen, and I'd like to talk about statements that you will hear from skeptics of asset allocation approaches. The main statement is to stay fully invested. The reason given for why people should stay fully invested in the stock market is, number one, one can't accurately forecast the market's direction, and two, if you miss a few days, you'll miss the major gains in the stock market. The comment that one cannot accurately forecast the direction of the stock market is something I believe is true. This is a screenshot from a website called Visual Capitalist and the link is at the bottom of the page and it covers the period from it looks like 2012 to the current period and this says 11 calls for market crashes and the organizations who are making these calls are reputable organizations PIMCO, Society General, Guggenheim, Barron's, and although many people say you can't forecast the market direction, many people do, and many people get it wrong. So the logic goes that if you can't forecast market direction, you shouldn't be making changes to your allocation to stocks. And I'll come back to that point a little bit later. The second point made about the stay fully invested advice is that if you miss the best days in the stock market, you'll miss out on most of the stock market's gains. And if you Google miss the 10 best days in the stock market, you get a number of articles that discuss that point. And some of the headlines, if we look through this list, are from Putnam. Time, not timing, is the best way to capitalize on the stock market. Fidelity says, stay invested, don't risk missing the market's best days. This view that most of the gains that occur in the stock market take place on a few days and you have to be in it to win it is one of the key arguments. And I'd like to focus in on what The Motley Fool says about this. Their headline is at the top. What happens when you miss the best days in the stock market? So this is the screenshot from The Motley Fool, and it cites a, it cites a report from J.P. Morgan Asset Management, the 2019 Retirement Guide, and it shows the impact of pulling out of the stock market has on your portfolio. And looking back over the 20-year period from January 1999 to December 31st, 2018, if you missed the top 10 best days in the stock market, your overall return was cut in half. That's a pretty compelling figure. But let's take a look at what those figures are. If one stayed invested, fully invested in the stock market, in the S&P 500, the annualized return over that period was 5.62%. If you missed the 10 best days, that return dropped down to 2.01% on an annualized basis. And if you miss the 20 best days of return, your annualized return was minus 33 basis points. And this really reinforces the idea that you have to be in it to win it. And that's a comment that sometimes you hear in the investment industry. But let's take a closer look at some of those numbers and where those big returns take place. This slide shows the 10 best performing weeks since 1992, and this is from the Focus 15 database, and we calculate everything on a weekly basis, but the same patterns will hold true, and if you look on the internet, you can find a similar kind of analysis done on the daily returns. But the number one best performing week since 1992 was on this date, and that return was 11.3%. The second best performing week was a 9.8% return, the third 9.1%, and even the 10th best performing week over that time period had a 6.5% return. And these are big numbers. If you missed out on these numbers, the story goes that you will miss out on most of the returns of the stock market. But these numbers are taken out of context. This chart shows what took place over the prior six weeks. Let's take a look at the best performing week, which was October 31st in 2008 with an 11.3% return. That 11.3% return indicates the return from this point to this point. And so that is a very high return. But the six weeks prior to this low point, the stock index was quite a bit higher. In fact, the decline over the six week period just prior to this low point looks like it was over 25%. And so the rebound of 11.3%, yes, you'd hate to miss that, but really you shouldn't have been participating in that 25 percentage point decline leading up to it. But if we look at a number of the other top performing weeks, most of them are still underwater compared to where they were just six weeks prior. And 
over the seven week period, the six weeks prior to the trough, prior to the starting point of that record breaking return, only three, one, two, three. Three of those weeks have a net gain for that seven week period. And seven of them are equal with where they started seven weeks earlier or lower than where they started seven weeks earlier. And again, closely and do an internet search, you can find similar analyses done on daily returns. The key market characteristic behind these numbers are that stock prices have broad tops and narrow bottoms. And so stock prices, when they're moving to their peak, that peak takes place over a period of several weeks or even months. The bottom is narrow and there is usually just one day that is the lowest point and then it moves up sharply from there. It will move up dramatically and then begin to make a broad top and then move down again to a narrow bottom and then up again to a broad top. The declines that we described in the earlier slide probably took place in a situation like this where the declines were quite sharp, there was a low point, and then a sharp rebound. Yes, is a dramatic increase in value compared to this low point. It is still a point that is lower than the very top of the prior cycle and lower than many points along the uh, beginning of the decline. And so our approach is try to avoid these declines, try to get out as this decline begins to unfold and be out certainly by this point and then get back in for the rebound. Now we're not able to do that every time, we have algorithms that help us make those allocation changes. This is a histogram of the returns of the diamond model portfolio. This vertical black line indicates a zero point. So all these points to the left indicate negative performance for a week. The points to the right indicate positive weekly returns. The green dots indicate what our traded portfolio did. The yellow dots indicate what the, the comparative benchmark did. And so the key points to focus on in this chart are these, the ones that are moderately positive weekly returns, and the ones that are more positive weekly returns. Now, the traded portfolio doesn't capture as many of the weeks that have returned from 2.5% to 5%. So the green dot is below the yellow dot. But the weeks that have returned from zero to 2.5%, we capture quite a bit more of those. We miss the biggest weekly gains, but we capture more of the gains that are moderate and small. Now on the other side, we miss some of the largest weekly losses. And for example, these two dots, the yellow dot here indicates weekly losses from 5% to minus 7.5%. And the comparative benchmark has a number that is higher than the traded portfolio in the green. The same is true for the weekly losses of minus 2.5% to minus 5%. So this is the distribution returns that we can capture with our algorithm-driven process. We miss the best performing weeks and the worst performing weeks, but we tend to do very well in the larger number of middle performing weeks. And the historical simulation going back 100 years of that traded portfolio is quite positive. This brown line represents the Dow Jones Industrial Average on a buy and hold basis. The green line is the traded portfolio, and of course this is, this is a simulation, and we still have losses, but the returns are quite a bit stronger, and we do miss the major losses. I'll describe this more in detail in other videos, but our approach is to decompose the price movements of the index into the larger macro trends and these last several years, and this is indicated by the heavy blue line and the exceptional macro indicates when the slope of that blue line is likely to turn positive. And the micro cycles, those indicate the bursts of resilience that take place a couple of times a year. And those are the things that we're focusing on. We're not making long-term bets. We are assessing the market's current condition with respect to resilience and the mean reverting aspect of those resilient cycles. And those are how we're making our near-term essentially resilience forecast for the next one to six weeks. Our bet is that those cycles that we're seeing now will continue into the future. And this chart shows the last 100 years and the resilient cycles. This magenta line is the Dow Jones on a buy and hold basis, the roaring 20s, the big declines, 
and then the internet boom and where we are today off on the right. This blue line is the macro market resilience index indicating the longer term trend. And this green line indicates the cycles of micro resilience. Generally speaking, it's consistent over this 100 year period. And in order for the Focus 15 process to work, these cycles need to continue into the future and prices need to move in response to those, those cycles. So the comment that forecasting is futile, we actually subscribe to that notion and we don't make heroic forecasts. We're making a forecast that the cycles that have continued for 100 years will continue into the future and that they will have some mean reverting aspect to them. The statement that if we miss a few days and we'll miss the major gains, that's actually a faulty argument. And we miss some of the biggest moves, positive and negative, but yet we're still able to do well long term. Thank you very much for watching and let me know if you have any questions or comments. Thank you.